So welcome everyone. Uh, of course, my name is Samuel Kamochu, and I'm happy to be here with you guys. <clears throat> I would like us to go uh, to make a few strides uh, towards the process of software engineering. Uh, the beauty about this thing is that uh, you guys are past the space of um, writing code. So most of you do not struggle writing the code, but we just need to ensure that you write the code in the right way. So one of the things that I told you uh, we covered yesterday was, and, and I'm just sharing, I shared this, this uh, markdown on GitHub. For those of you who do not have access to it, uh, you can go to GitHub and look at this. Uh, we said ideas, anyone can have an idea. The most important thing is not an idea. It's the execution that matters. So we have published one of the projects here. And in the roughest way, it can be. So everything that I'm recording, I'll still push today. So I'd like you guys to come and uh, look at that. So everything we said yesterday, I pushed. I actually drew the diagram and added it to the markdown. So today we are talking about the experiences and the processes. So right now, I want to look at a few things that I've done. And I have designed, I know you guys might have designed this. I am not the best guy in designing uh, these things, but I know Wesley could do a better job. Uh, but I want to share what I can see in my mind, drawn on a piece of paper. Uh, and I want you guys to look at it. So I, I don't want to deal with the login page because it's trivial. Because we had said that's a page that you have to look at. So I don't want to deal with the login page. And I know you guys can do this. So I want to deal with once you log in, what do you see? And my suggestion in the first release, and I hope you guys can see my screen. Can people see my screen? Yes, yes, we can. Yeah, thank you. So uh, ignore my handwriting, but the login page, I just want a baker, anything they are doing on the app, and I'm just putting myself in the shoes of a baker. I want to search for a customer. Everything starts with a customer. Whether you want to place an order to cancel an order starts with a customer. And I'm borrowing some design that has been done by Wesley in other systems, but now we have to make it mobile friendly. So on the laptop, it would look like this. So there is a, either you are coming to search for a customer, then you place an order against that customer, or you want to add a customer. So you can see the add button. So anything that they want to do begins with a customer. That's the most common feature that they'll be accessing on their system, searching or creating a customer. Now, as part of the day-to-day -day operations, once they log in, I have a suggested experience that at uh, the bottom here, sorry, I should have added a refresh button here. So I know Wesley loves this. So I'll add on my diagram, I'll share this image after this. So I'd add a refresh button there, which means that if I have, if maybe someone has paid an order, maybe some details, the order status has to change, I can actually refresh there. And this is what I would prefer as the landing page for my thing. So, and then it will show me the pending orders or the recent orders in the order of the one that is due for baking. So if I have three orders, one for tomorrow, today's order should be at the top of the list one for tomorrow and tomorrow, one for today and two for tomorrow. The orders for today must be at the top of the list. Is there anyone with an objection on that experience? Steve Wakungu, do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? It is, it should work. Okay, so you believe that everything, this experience is not a bad experience to start with. So uh, guys, it's not rocket science. This is just basic stuff. So on the landing page, once you log in, we can have a welcome maybe somewhere. Or I have not drawn where the user icon will be. Maybe we know the user, but I'm just displaying the content of what is critical. And then I have a button for view all. And I can view a specific order. Of course, if I search the customer, I'll see a list of customers at the bottom. So the search 
is nimesema autocomplete and why am i saying autocomplete because as you search i want the, the search panel to show me a drop down of the customers that i have so if i have steve wakongo and steven uh steven who steven steven uh, there, there, there is another guy called steven yeah we have two stevens wakongo and the other one is steven Musembi. Musembi, yes so at the moment i start typing steve I see Wakongo and Musembi as the drop down. If I click on what is appearing, if I click on Musembi, then what I'll do is I'll move to the next experience. So from here I can navigate the guys of Figma. I can navigate to a view customer or a view order or view all orders page which I have not designed. So I'll, I'll also write that to that because I need to create view all orders uh, page so i need to create that so i have written it on the notebook so that we can work on it so here i'm uh, behaving like a ui ux guy i perform pathetically at it but i am a big fan of ensuring that you do if the user doesn't come to extract the reports every day let not let the report extraction be the primary button in the system so what they do every single day is what you need to ensure that you provide at the home page. Any questions? And at this point, I'll ask uh, Tevin to go pamoja up to there. Yes. Okay. So if I told you to do this for the farmer's system, you can do it, yeah? Or even that idea that you have in your mind, you can do it, right? Sure, sure. No. Yeah. So for me to come up with this experience, something happened in my mind, which I didn't tell you, but I was trying to ask myself, what would this guy be doing on my system? So that was the question that I was trying to ask myself. Okay, let me just come and get another. Yes, customer view. So if you search a customer and you get a customer, this is what I'm suggesting. Okay, before I do that, actually, I have just found myself uh, not highlighting something. So for the guys who are doing backend, this is where you, I know some of you, you think of creating the APIs before creating a system. Now, you are supposed to create APIs based on the experience you want to create. So in this case, if you ask me, then there is an API that needs to be exposed. For those guys of Spring Boot, uh, no, JS, there is an API we need to expose. We need to get an API for the model object customer, but we should be able to have a search customer API. What do we provide as the value? The name. And it should return the list of customers who have the word Steve. So you see how we are transitioning from experience to APIs. We already know that there is an object within our DB, an entity called customer. By now, you know how to create entities. If you don't know, it is a bit unfortunate, but we'll not give up. We'll work with you. So you already know by creating a, an, an API that we have that. Now, the next thing that we want to look at is once we search the customer API, you provide the name, it returns the list of customers. So I know right now someone like Alvin uh, or even Tevin, Tevin, I saw you doing APIs. You must be very okay with being told to create such an API. Tevin, do you get the point? Yes, I get it. If I told you to create an API that filters customer based on the name on Spring Boot, can you? I can. Thank you so much. So you see why Tevin now can become the developer of this product. Now, another API, Tevin, can you tell me? Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot, but I want this session to be interactive because I don't want to be the one saying everything. For us to display this data, we also need another API. Can someone tell me which API we need? API number one created, API number two. For me to display, and I'll give you a hint, to display this thing. Tevin, I'll give you a chance. What API do I need to create for us to be able to show this data? This is the list. This is a list. I know I might not have created. It's a list of what? Orders. Yeah? Oh, orders, orders. So I need an API to do what? Filter oh, orders oh. by... By Bet. Baker. <laughs> Baker. 
No, 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 by Baker. Because Baker. the Baker ID, okay. yeah. Because you see, at the end of the day, who has logged in? The Baker. If the Baker is Baker 7, you can't represent the orders for Baker 8. Is that okay, Tevin? Yes, understood. After signing up, we already know the Baker. Using the Baker ID, we make an API call. Sorry, an API call to the backend to get all the orders that are pending for this baker and you order them by the by the date of delivery. So no, descending, ascending. Descending, ascending. So you order by delivery date ascending. Then you can limit to X of them because you don't want to list if the guy has a thousand orders. You don't want to see all the thousand orders. You just need to see the latest maybe 10, and then you click the view button, which will take you to another page. Copa Mods up to there. Tevin, you've seen the two APIs we need for this? Yes, I've seen. Okay. Of course, if you are creating a customer, you also need an API to create customer. Which API to create customer? Is that okay? Although I have not yes. taken the view for create customer. So I need to add on my notebook I need to give you a view to create customer view. Create customer view. Now, the guys who are doing the modeling, who know the fields for the customer, will guide us on what parameters you need to add. So at this point, I'm just showing you the screens and the data that we need to display. The guys who are doing the modeling will refine this further. So I'm just doing this for illustration sake. So we are to copper mode. Now, I will be dealing with another guy. Tevin, thank you so much. Kiplimo Collins, you are the next guy, and uh, you are supposed to help us ensure that we have the experience for view customer. Then you'll tell us what API is do exist for the view customer. So once I create the view customer, remember there was a button for you to, to, to view an order. This button here, sorry, this button here to view an order. It will take us to view order page. But before I go to view order, when you search the customer and you do autocomplete, uh, once you do the autocomplete, you can click on the name of Steve Wakungo and it will take you to view customer. So view customer will look like this. And this is my suggestion, sorry. It doesn't mean that, uh, oh my gosh, yes. View customer, customer view, this is it. So my view is this, again, inspired by things that might not, ah, I've already told you the APIs that are needed for this one. So Collins, you are lucky, but you can tell us whether you can create such APIs. So the customer view at the top will have the biodata. The guys who are doing the modeling can tell us. Maybe you can have even the date they were registered. It's always good to have such information. And the key thing when you're viewing the customer, the primary function of viewing the customer is probably to do something relating to an order. Either place an order, you can see add order there. Apologies, I'm not marketing KCB. Just coincidentally happened that I'm using their notebook for recording. Yeah, but if you know a guy from KCB marketing, you can tell them to see me for for some. Uh, they can pay us <laughs> for doing marketing for free. Yeah, so so the orders here, uh, you can get the orders. So here, if someone has placed seventeen orders, they'll be listed here. And they can be paginated. So the assumption is orders and they could be pagination. Yes. So you want to see the orders that this guy has made. So you have pagination at the bottom here. So on my real diagram, I've added something there. Now, each order will be here and you'll have a view button. The latest order should be at the top. So and that's why I'm saying we need an API to get orders for the customer. Order by order by uh, order date ascending, descending, so that the latest order is at the top. So it's highly unlikely that a customer will have seven orders open. So probably you'll have three orders closed and the top one is the latest one, which is under progress. So in other words, what I'm saying is that once the baker goes to the homepage, they search the customer, and they come here. Once they come here, they'll either be placing a new order or they'll be viewing an existing order. So how many APIs do I need? I need, uh, and probably they can also have a tab for payments and a tab for notifications. 
So how many notifications have you ever sent to this customer? And how many payments have this customer made to you? So you can go and see, ah, okay, this is the payment log. Now, there is another place where we can record payments. Payments made against an order. They can also go to the order. I hope I'm not confusing you. So when you go to the view order page, you'll see under it, we'll also have payments, but only payments against that order. Here, it's all payments against all orders as long as they're made by this customer. So that's, I have not asked the baker whether they need this information, but from my experience and myself putting, getting into the shoes of a baker, I think we are trying to answer some of the questions that we'll be having. Maybe someone will be asking, uh, did this guy actually pay? Or how much, when did he pay? Oh, he paid this money, but for this order. Okay, the other payment that you made. So we're basically trying to preempt, put ourselves into the shoes of the customer for us to do this. I'm very excited to, know, to see that Marlin and team are organizing what we call uh, an evening with the masters, if I'm not wrong. And there is one person who I don't know, but has been invited to come and speak to us about why you should not ignore people or the users or the humans in product design. So here we are designing one. I'll tell you for sure, writing the code is the easiest thing. If I told Kiplimo to come and do an API for us, query orders by customer ID, that thing will be ready by evening. If I tell Kiplimo to do these three APIs, he will. If I ask the guys who are doing Angular and front-end developers how to do this page, they will. So in a nutshell, we can sleep today having the experience of the view customer ready. If I challenge you, if you go to Facebook, they don't have a lot of views. They probably have the timeline. They have a view for a comment. So they are countable views. So any system you can create it uh, with this. So the only thing we need to consider is how we design the high-level high design and the, everything that we were talking about yesterday for scalability. So this one is, in terms of the experience, I'm biasing, I'm, I'm, this is a biased view. I know you guys could have drawn something, but I'm just sharing uh, my view. If your view was very different from mine, let's have a conversation and see whether we can borrow a few things from yours. So APIs needed is get customer by ID so that we display this. So you can get one customer with the ID of the customer. Why? Because you already know the customer. By the time you're coming here, you clicked either the search and you clicked Steve Wakongo. When you click that object, it redirected you to a new state for those guys who do front-end development. And that new state, you passed over the ID of the customer. And when you're coming here, you're able to view the customer. Security considerations. Because this system is going to be multi-tenant, meaning that many bakers can be here, you have to find a way in which those IDs cannot be guessed. Because one of the things you don't want to do is a baker who has a customer with ID 7 and another baker who has a customer with ID 8. You do not want to go to the URL and change from 8 and 7. Then you're able to see the details of the customer from another baker. Otherwise, you can just loop through from one to zero and you get the details of all the bakers and now you get into big problems because your system is not secure and people can see my customer's details. You need to guarantee that the data that you have regarding the baker is only visible to that baker. So that goes back to the API security. So at the API level, even if I pass a customer ID 7, the guys who are doing the API for get customer, they have to check the user who is logged in and validate that that customer belongs to that user. If it doesn't belong to that user, you just tell them the customer does not exist. I hope I'm making sense, Kiplimo, adding a small element in the API. And I know you guys might not have done securities on the APIs, but don't worry. By the time you're finishing, you'll have understood how to secure your APIs. For now, just know how to filter. Any question, Kiplimo? No. So, Given a chance, you can deliver this for us, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mutea, guess what? You're the next one, and uh, you'll have to tell us now what to do here. Now, how do we get to this order view? I will actually come here and just click on this page where you have the customer. Sorry, I click on this page 
where we have the customer. I just took these screenshots. Huh? Uh, sorry, where is the customer? Where is the customer? Yes, this is the customer view. If you click on this view order, remember this is a list of orders. Huh? My diagram doesn't look really nice. We'll keep updating them as we continue. If you click on this view order, it takes you to view, to that order page that you are going to see. If you also click on, oh, what was I, okay. If you also click on this view order from the home page of the baker, then it will also take you there. So the key idea that we need to consider now is that when you click on the order, it comes here. Again, we have to secure because you don't want an order for one baker to be seen by the another baker because you know the ID. You, you guys are techies. At the API level, you could just change the ID and you see the order of another baker. So API security comes into play. Today, the subject is experience. So by the time we come here, Motea, be ready to tell us which APIs are required for this order view page. The API is needed. So first is that if you want to cancel an order, because we said we can cancel an order, it will happen here. If you want to update the order as delivered, there is a button here called actions. And when you go to the drop down, it will mark record as delivered or even cancel or even edit do something the actions will be here so i know i have not displayed this but here you have the actions could be cancel you could have edit mark as delivered and uh yeah so i think that's it and the order will have a status so if it's canceled, it will have, okay. and then once you click on these, the customer name should be a link so that if you click on John Doe, it takes you to the John Doe customer view. That's experience for you. And of course the order will, when it was made, how much is the money, how much is spending and other details according to the model. The people who have been on the table for orders, they'll tell us what they have. When you look at an order of key interest are the payments. So you'll be able to see the payment reference number, the date it was paid, the amount that was paid, and maybe some narration. I'm just thinking the model guys can tell us. And then after that, you can have what? The record payment. So if you want to pay against an order, you go search for that order. You search for the customer. You see the order under the customer. You click on that order. It brings you to this page. And then you can click record payment there. Now, in again is this order so if you have sent notifications to this customer again is this order we can generate them and we can put them here i know there is someone who said notification detail so is there any question motel regarding this no question uh can you start are, are you in a position to start uh sorry are you know at this particular point have you started to visualize the system? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you so much. I just needed to hear that. And I hope that you're not speaking for yourself. You're speaking for many other guys who have not spoken. Tell us, what APIs do we need for this? And I'm asking guys who I know they have done backend work. So if I don't know, I know these guys that I've mentioned, they have always done something on backend. So what APIs do we need? And I've seen Mary is here. I know Mary does backend APIs. Uh, so I'd like to know anyone else who has not done, who has done backend. What APIs do you need for this motel? List. Okay, so uh, you mentioned something to do with cancel. So we need we need a delete. Uh, with the edit, we would do an update. Maybe we could update by before before you talk any. about sorry sorry uh sorry for interjecting but before you talk about the actions that are the derivatives of this page i just want what apis do you need just to display the data first or oh, to display the data we need a uh, get uh, the maybe get by id get what get or get customer Get custom. Get. Huh? Okay. We are, um, we are in the order view page. Yeah, get orders by get order get, by yeah. 
by id by id yes okay so what else do you think we need for us that will allow us to display this stuff sindo mm -hmm. okay so what about here for us to display the payments made against this order remember you have to think in the model object we said with there is a model object called order there is a model object called customer there is a model object called uh, there is a model object called customer there is a model object called payment there is a model object called notification oh okay so tell me what apis we need to create for us to render the data in this page so with the with the payments if mm -hmm. we yeah we have the if we have the payment object then we need to get mm -hmm. to to get payment by by the by the order id thank you so much that's what i wanted to hear so we will create an api against the controller the rest controller for payment and say filter by and then you pass the order id Sindo. yes and you'll go to the db select all the payments whose order id matches what has been passed and you return that as an array as a list and that is what now we come here and the angular guys loop through the data and display there yeah. is that okay or even the react people or the vanilla javascript guys uh, mr mr Mota. yes thank you the reason why i'm engaging you guys is because i need you people to challenge yourself you need to identify which model object and which uh, parameter do you know by the time we're in this page we know the order id true and because yeah. we know the order id we can actually use the order id to get the payments you can order them there you forgot to mention that you order by the payment date descending Sindo. yeah because would you want if you have a hundred thousand a hundred payments do you want to see the most recent payment at the bottom or at the top at the top thank you so much so that's experience i i guess you're not a baker i can tell Mota, but i can bet that a baker would answer like you so you you are doing very well in getting into the shoes of a baker i know some of you are like these things are trivial yes they are trivial we just need to appreciate the process. Creating APIs, ooh, ooh Collins and Kip, uh, Kiplimo can do a few of them. He's still a student, but he can create a few of them. So why have we not created systems? It's another question. Now, this is filtering by the recent payments. Yes, Waidaka, thank you so much. The recent payment, so you can limit. But then the question is, Waidaka, if you limit maybe the last X payments, uh, you can do paginated. Maybe, I think we can do paginated so that we query the last few records, but at the bottom we can have pagination. So allow me to say pagination at the bottom. So I'll add pagination in the diagram that I have. Later I'll take another screenshot, capture what we're discussing in a markdown and submit on GitHub. As bad as it is, it gives you an idea. My handwriting is, uh, I had a dream of becoming a doctor until I discovered I was meant to be a teacher. And this is what I'm trying to practice. Yes. So the handwriting is a bit confused. Teacher, doctor, and uh, of course, Jab refused that I become a doctor. So the last API, if there is notification, you also need to get notifications by what? By order ID. ID. Is that okay? Yeah. The same stuff that we have talked about. So... I will leave that there. Let me see how much time I have. I was given a serious alter. Ah, oh, yes, I'm doing well. I have 30 minutes. And I believe by 30 minutes, I'll be done dealing with the experience that you want to create. I'm discussing just a few things. And one of the things that I would like you guys to know is that here, my design is that when an order is made, the payment details are made, if I click view, it doesn't have to take me to a new page. It will just show a pop-up 
with a dialogue sort of with a lot of details and you can close the dialogue. So it will not be a new state for those guys who are front-end developers. It will not be a transition into a new state, but it's just a dialogue. It could use the data that is already on the front-end or it could make an API call to the back-end. That I leave to the developers to decide. But optionally, we could have an API to get a single payment or you could use the data from the list of payments to actually display whatever comes on the pop-up. What do I mean? Now, if I click view here, it will not move out of this page. It will just show a dialogue above the screen, centrally placed, that will have the details of that payment. Would that be okay, Motea? Yes, yeah. Thank you. Because there is, you don't need to drill further. A payment is the final object. So there is nothing beyond payment. You see, an order has a, a list of payment records. That's why we are creating a view for it. But the other one, we just do a dialogue. So this is a, a new page. When you click on order, it takes you to a full new page. You transition from the old one to the new one. As part of this, I have not dictated how the menus will be and the navigation buttons. Because you know, sometimes you want to go back. So I'm not drawing that on this paper because the focus is just the experience and how the APIs that you'll have. So the go back and all those things, we'll do them together. As a matter of fact, I will assign some of you guys to actually craft a fully fledged experience for this guy. Now, which other thing have we not looked at? So I will go back to our image and say, we've already looked at the view payment, a pop-up. Uh, one of the things, Motea, I needed to ask you, where will the name come from? Because an order does not have a name. It has a customer ID. And I'm now thinking like a guy who is building a, D a DB. So you don't copy the name of the customer in the order table. You actually copy the customer ID on the order table. But using that information, we should be able to get the name. Motea, or yeah. someone in the group, how do we get the name? And yet you have told us that we can only, we have an API for get order by ID. Where will we get the name from? Do we make another API call because the order has the customer ID? Or do we ask, how do we go about it? And I want to pose that as a challenge to you guys, anyone, whatever you can answer because you are the person of interest, but anyone with a suggestion. The order table has no name of the customer. I hope I'm making sense to people who have designed systems. If you are creating a database, you don't, we normalize, you don't, if you have a, a student and you have a parent, uh, in the student table, you don't put the parent name. You actually move the parent outside. Then you say, who is the parent of this student? Assuming a student has one parent. So if you want to display the parent name, you'll get the student object. You see the parent ID. You go get the parent object. You get the name, and then you use that name to display. Now, the parent of Motea, Boniface, is actually Motea. I'm assuming Motea is your dad. Yes. So how do we go about this? And I want to hear from you guys. We are getting an order, but we want to display the name of the customer on that order. Do we, how do we go about it? Knowing that these are two records in two different tables or two model objects, and, and an order and a customer. Although when we display the order, we want to display the name of the customer. So the question is, how do we go about it? Um... So from my thinking, uh. we already have an API that can fetch uh, the customer's information. Maybe we can we can just use the same API and then filter. Go. Uh, um, let me find the right one. And then get the data where with a key, the, the, the specific data that we want to show that API. I think. Okay. So let me let me let me say it in in a different word then there are different words then you tell me whether we're on the same page so you're saying we make an api call to get an order with the order id perfect we will get an order object Sindo. yes then the order object will have the customer id because an order is tied to a customer true yes so you want me to make an a second api call to the get customer by customer ID, but then I pass the value that I get from the order object. Is that what you're saying? Yes. That will work. 
And that is what most people would do. But in API design, there is also an option of telling the guys who are creating the order view object, the order API, they add the order name as part of the customer DTO. Now, thank you. We've gotten to a place where I've introduced something. Now, actually the best practice would be not to make two API calls because we all know the weight and the, the burden of making two API calls. What we do is, because all the time we access the order, most of the time we want to know the customer name, we would create the order object as an entity and you guys have already worked on creating an entity for those guys who did Spring Boot APIs, but I would also create something called a DTO, data transfer object. Data transfer object is an object within your project and you'll call it order DTO. So the order DTO will have all the fields from the order, maybe all, not necessarily all, but then it will have in addition it will have the customer ID and the customer name. So that we leave the headache of putting, so when I get an order on the front end, I will get the order object DTO that will have all, all the fields of an order. But in addition to that, it will go against the rules of normalization and it will get me the customer name. So how the API will work is on the back end, it will get the order, then get the customer, pick the name of the customer and create the order DTO that has both data combined. Now, the DTO is a concept that you have introduced today that is very critical in API designs. A DTO does not necessarily need to have one-to-one -one mapping with the domain object. A domain object is the problem domain, whether it's a school system, the student's units, but a DTO is another object that could be fetching data from different domain objects or sometimes fetching data from one domain object, but it is a subset. E.g., if you have a user object in the DB, there is a password field in the DB. But when you are retrieving data to the API, you do not want to show the password. So what happens at that particular point is you create the user object entity in the DB, and then you also create a user DTO, and the user DTO does not have the password and the hashes and any security elements that you don't want people to see through the API. So that's the space for DTOs in APIs. Or sometimes people say VMs. I think it's virtual models, if I'm not wrong. So you could see user VM. We are talking about it's a thing that borrows from the user object, but it's a virtual view or virtual model. So it's not a real thing on the DB, but it is made up of that. So we can use that to get the customer name. Yes, I do not want to forget that the lesson today is experience. So I don't want to dive further into that, but I hope you guys have gotten. So I, we've gotten the point. So ideally, we will have one API that gives us an order but that order object, it's an order DTO, and that DTO must include the customer name. So that Motel doesn't have to make two API calls. Are we okay, Bwana Waizaka? Yes, yes, I'm a lawyer. I'm going to your feeling. Uh, two API calls are not the best. Are too heavy, choice. yes. Thank you. By the way, this feeling that you have is, is, is the feeling that reasonable people would have. So it's reasoning and uh, network latency, it's, it's not good. So although you don't abuse it, um, so you also need to take a bit of control. Mota, are you happy? Yes. Yeah, I'm good. Now, let me ask you, if we gave you these things, would you create the APIs for this view? Yes, I could. Thank you so much. So Iki Tukama, we want to create this system. We have someone who can do this view in one day, another guy who can do another view in one day. Essentially, by Monday, we could have the system ready. And why am I saying that? Because I want to point the picture that writing code is a very small function of software engineering. If you started by writing code, you can take three weeks. If you do it the right way, it can take three days and you have a system. 
with collaboration. Thanks. So uh, let me go back. So this one we have talked about. We've seen the order view. There is no new button. The actions, I don't want to discuss them today. But I know you had already stepped into that space. We are not doing record payment. That one will do a view for it. And I'll get one of the persons to be a volunteer of this system and they can complete the experience for me. Now, the other thing that we need to do is I want to come and look at this customer. So customer view order, we have already seen that view order takes us to the view order page. Add order, we are not doing add today. Those fields will be done later. Action on the customer, I have not figured out what you can do on a customer. Can you close a customer? No. Can you? I don't know. Maybe, can you delete a customer? Maybe. But why should you? So those are some of the things that you have to ask ourselves. Maybe we can say delete a customer. That could be one of the actions. What else can you do with a customer? Can you suspend? Maybe. I don't know. Why would you? So we don't have, the user would tell you, hey, in the day-to-day -day operation, there are customers who are very problematic and we just want to uh, suspend them on our system. They are still there. I've not closed them, but they we cannot place an order until I unsuspend them. So that's where the action drop down would actually come into play. So I can also add suspend and unsuspend. Now, I'm adding this with a hypothetical scenario. It doesn't mean that we have to do it today, but we could consider it if it is not difficult. So if I need an API to suspend a customer, maybe some of you could create it in a day. So we can add that capability to ensure that we have rules around customers who you cannot place an order against them because they are not ready to trade maybe because they, they are problematic. So this page, you have seen it. Uh, let me see another page. So we have order view, we have seen it. Seeing the payment, it's a one click. Notification, uh, it's just similar. There is nothing beyond notification. It's the last object in the chain. If you realize we are creating a chain, a chain, a hierarchy. So payment view, in Ezekua Hivi, it's just a list of fields and uh, it's a dialogue. So you can close it. So I don't need to mention so much about it. Of course, you want to put information that is necessary to the user. So if you don't put the amount in the payment view, then you are, you are, you are, you are misled because a payment and amount is very important. Customer view, we have already dealt with that. And this one, we have already dealt with that. And then this one, we have already. So the key thing that I have not done is when you, key, when you click view all, what happens? So, and that brings me to the end of my sessions on these. So we have basically talked about the landing page experience, how you can search and do orders. In future, we will do a calendar, but for now, I've done the list of the most recent orders. The most recent at the top, we've agreed on the API to use. Place an order, we have seen how the button for place an order, where it is, creating a customer, uh, then we have seen a button for creating a customer. Record a payment, we've seen a button for record a payment. Cancel order, it's under actions. Mark the order is delivered, it's under actions. Baker setting experience, I would love to do this as the last one because the settings will be, uh, uh, we will discover some of the settings as we proceed. And that brings me to the end of today's session. And I hope that what we have studied today, you can use it now to uh, tackle other issues. Is that okay? So there are certain page you have, pages we have not created, like how do you have the page for add a customer? How does it look like? What APIs are needed? The APIs are pretty straightforward. You just have a view for add customer and you can do the rest. I would uh, make an argument that what we are discussing today is actually not today, but this week. This is the most important. Okay, there are people who can debate on that aspect. But I personally believe that the process is the most important thing in software engineering. You can know how to write the best Angular code, the best JavaScript code, the best everything. But if you don't follow this process, we are not sure you'll get to where you want to get. You might, but you will have a lot of challenges. I hope you guys can see the benefit of thinking in this way because if we have a team of six guys, three backend engineers, we can actually create this system in two days. 
So we'll deal with the processes. And processes are not difficult things. Like when I talked about get order API, I mentioned something that the logic and Waidaka was in agreement with me. He's not a prophet, but for some reason we were aligned into where we were going. And what Waidaka said is this that he suspected that making two API calls will be difficult. So we agreed as part of the design session that we will do one API, but that API must expose a DTO instead of exposing a model object. So that DTO will combine the fields within the order, but at the same time, it will also add the field for customer name in the order DTO. And what we need to do is to tell the guy who is creating that API, this is the process. We will pass one input called the ID of the order. And once I pass that input of the ID of the order, uh, the, the order ID or the ID of the order, what you'll do is you'll go to the backend in the repository, definitely. You'll go get the order with the ID five. You get that record and you hold it. Don't do anything with it yet. Then once you get that object, check who is the customer. And in the field of the order object, we'll have the customer ID. Now, once we get the customer ID, we'll go back and make an API. We get to the database and get the customer. And once we get the customer, then what happens is we go and pick the fields of the order together with the fields of the customer object, but specifically the customer name. You use those fields to create the order DTO or the order VM. And that order VM is what you return on the API. What I've just described is the process model. It's a very simple process, but if you specify that, irrespective of the level of experience of the engineer, they can implement it. If they understand English and they understand what you're talking about. So that is why now, if we do the process and we do the designs, we do the process modeling, by the time we are giving the developers work to do these things, then it's just a walk in the park. So they'll go and follow the procedure. Let me give the last example. When you're creating an order, we said yesterday that when you create an order, one of the things that will happen is you'll have to notify the customer. So for us to notify the customer, as part of the create order API, the create order API will actually come and insert the order into the DB here. And in addition to that, it will make an API call to, it will generate an SMS to go out based on the templates of the baker. So a baker could have a different language or a different template for the notifications. Uh, and the notification could actually have the name, the brand of the customer. So that's another thing that we have to consider. So go to the template for that baker because you know the order, you know the baker, and once you know the baker, then you go to the template of that baker, get the notification for order creation, come and replace it with the details of your order, e.g. put the amount in the SMS, put the payment details in the SMS. Then after that, make an API call to the notification service. Once you make an API call to the notification service, that process ends there. Because your work is to create the API. So the API will have to call the DB, and then after calling the DB, it will call the notification. For those guys who have done Spring Boot, that is the business logic. And the business logic goes to the service. So you'll have a order controller, order service, order repository. The logic of making an API call to the notification service should primarily fall under the order service because that's where we define the business logic. What have I described? I've described the process modeling. Do I have to describe it or can I write the code? Ideally, when you're doing design, it's a collaborative effort. We decide on the process. We look at the various considerations. We discover that actually we needed to store the payment details somewhere under the Baker settings. And we go one, two, three, we discuss, and we do all that thing until we get to a point where we say, okay, this system is actually complete before we write any code. And now we move on and write the code. That is my last comment. Thank you and have a nice weekend.